All right, so how do S-Corp taxes work? Well, first, we're going to have to go through how the S-Corp actually saves tax versus a sole proprietorship or partnership, and then we can go through how that actually ends up on your tax return. All right, so to first start off our handy spreadsheet here, we're going to go through an example. This is a sole proprietorship or partnership, right? It has sales, expenses, profit. That profit is what we're subject to tax here. Now, if we're a sole proper partnership, that $100,000 will be subject to 15.3% FICA taxes, the Social Security Medicare tax. So it's $15,300 just for Social Security Medicare tax in this example. That is in addition to ordinary income tax rates, which are the tax brackets like 10, 12, 22, 24, et cetera, with the feds. Now, if we compare this to an S corporation, the profit of an S corporation is not subject to that 15.3% FICA tax. But there's a catch, of course. You gotta pay something to Social Security and Medicare tax. And the way that we pay that Social Security and Medicare tax is through payroll. Your S corp has to pay yourself. So you would be an employee of the business. All right, so to take a look at how this works, same example as previous. Sales 150, expenses 50,000. Now that 100,000 of profit that you had with the sole proper partnership will be split between payroll, right? What goes on a W-2, what you pay yourself through payroll, and then 60,000 would be left over for profit. So only that 40,000 will be subject to that 15.3% Social Security, Medicare tax, or FICA tax, right? $6,000. Now, if we see here, there's a massive savings in this example of $9,000 with the same income, same expenses, just split differently and set up as an S-corporation. Now, there are additional factors to the S-corporation that you have to consider in terms of costs to this S-corp that I will go through later in the video. So be sure to stick around. That $9,000 is not as straightforward as it seems, but it is pretty close. All right, so we know that the S-Corp saves us on taxes and roughly how that works. Now, this is how it works in terms of the flow on a tax return. You will need to fill out an 1120S, which is something like this here for the S-Corp issue. So there is a separate S-Corp tax return that you will need to do. So just like our example, let's say easy numbers, this is a just for illustration purposes, straightforward tax return. 150,000 sales, 40,000 is what you paid yourself on a W-2 to the officer, and then you had other expenses of 50,000. So you had profits of the business of 60,000. All right, so the S-Corp is what we consider as professionals a pass-through entity. And the reason we say pass-through is because the tax passes through to your personal return. The S-Corp itself, at least with the feds, pays no tax. You pay the tax on your personal return. Now, depending upon what state you live in, you may pay some state tax on the S-Corp. But with the feds, there is no tax with the S-Corp. All right, to illustrate how the logistics works with this income and how it flows through on your personal return. So if you remember on our example here, right, we had 40000 as W-2 and 60000 as profit with the K-1. Again, 100K is what you are getting here. Now, you're going to get a W-2, which I'm sure you've seen before, but it'll be from your S-Corp to your personal name, okay? That 40000 will be there. You will then get a K-1 after you do the S-Corp tax return itself with that 60000 on the K-1. Now, with these two, you will fill out your personal tax return, okay? You go here, we'll have 40000 as wages, W-2, 60,000 as profits. That 100,000, you will be taxed on your personal income tax return and pay taxes there, ordinary income tax. Now that we know the full 100,000 of income from the S-Corp will end up on your personal income tax return, you're gonna need to pay taxes on that 60,000 of profits that 
did not get run through payroll. Since the 40,000 will get ran through payroll, you'll have taxes withheld on that. But that 60,000, you'll need to pay taxes on on a quarterly basis. Can you wait until the end of the year to pay tax and not pay quarterly on that 60,000 of profits? You can, but you might get hit with what they call a prepay tax penalty for not paying your estimated taxes. 